Welcome to the first CJS Noon Lecture in 2024 winter semester. My name is Keiko Yokota Carter. I'm a Japanese studies librarian at the University of Michigan Library. I am thrilled and honored to introduce our esteemed guest from Japan, Mrs. Maduren Umewaka. As the president of MJU Public Relations, Mrs. Umewaka organizes diverse artistic and cultural events. Born in Beirut, Lebanon, under a civil war, she then relocated to Japan, where she eventually married no master, Naohiko Umewaka. In 2019, she published her intriguing book named The No Master's Wife. Lebanon Kara Kita, No Gakushi no Tsuma. Under the highly regarded Japanese publisher, Iwanami Shoten. French translation of her book was published in Paris last year and the Chinese translation is in press now. Allow me briefly to share with you how I forged a connection with her. I first encountered her work through my role as the Japanese studies librarian at the University of Michigan. For my role and tales of selecting Japanese studies books for our library collection, when I came across her book from the publisher's list, I immediately ordered it. Personally, being born and raised within Japanese traditional culture with the strict protocols, I was intrigued by her unique experience of being a part of a renowned No family with over six centuries of tradition. From a research perspective, I regarded this book as a potential resource to enhance diversity, equity, and inclusion in Japanese studies. I summarize the author's intimate experiences and struggles with the historical no family of Japan would provide profound insights into Japanese culture, society, and education. Having read the book, I can confirm my assumptions were correct. Years prior to her book's release, I had noted her husband, no master Naohiko Umewaka, for his unconventional creativity, who was redefining traditions. I recalled watching a documentary by NHK in which he experimented with the impact of no performances on his heart rate, providing scientific insight into the con concentration required in no. Showing his experiment in documentary in public was an unusual endeavor for someone from a deeply traditional no family. Today, we are very fortunate to have Mrs. Umewaka sharing her insights from her incredibly diverse life experience and her endeavors in promoting no performance globally. She pursued her studies at various prestigious institutions, including the University of Reading, England, University of Southern California, Osaka University, and the University of Tokyo. She has been actively promoting no theater, successfully extending its reach globally. Additionally, her significant contributions to the richness of Lebanese and Japanese cultures were recognized by Lebanon Ministry of Culture in 2015 with an award. Today's lecture will focus on life journey of an individual who has carved a path for herself as a producer of artistic and cultural activities. Through her work, Mrs. Umewaka has facilitated dialogue and built di bridges among people with different culture and religious backgrounds. She will introduce us to the intricacies, intricacies of no performance viewed from not just a philosoph philosophical perspective, 
but from myriad angles. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Umewaka. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Yoko Kata, for kindly, for your generous uh, introduction. And thank you everyone for coming in this beautiful day. I didn't expect uh, to have, I love, I, it's first time in Michigan and I love it. Uh, and thank you, especially the Center of Japanese Study for inviting me. I'm very honored to be here and I hope uh, I can share with you uh, my journey from back uh, from the war, um, I mean, war-torn Beirut to backstage of the 600 years old No Theater. No is spelled N-O-H. And um, I have been part of this traditional closed net uh, No word for over 40 years. So I'm happy to give you a glimpse of no beauty, the discipline involved, and my personal experiences. By the way, how many of you have seen no or know about no? Oh, oh, I see many hands. I'm very impressed. Okay, so let me, before I dive into the intricacy of no, let me show a short clip so you can have an idea what is about. I like the posture and uh, I like the, the silence. Okay, now that you've seen that, you're going to wonder what a Lebanese woman from a totally different culture is assimilated in the, to this no world, and particularly the Umewaka family, where unbroken lineage has passed down the no tradition from father to son over 600 years. Um, in order to explain this, I need to take you back how I got to Japan, especially that the Lebanese community in all Japan is less than uh, 200 people. So I'm sure in Michigan you have many more than this. My connection in Japan was made by my elder sister, Mary Rose, who met her Japanese husband, uh, Michikane, in 1970 in Lebanon before the Civil War. This was a time when Lebanon was prospering and thriving and was called the Paris of the Middle East. And at the time we had like 200 Japanese company and we even had a Japanese school. And now there's nothing like this, you know, it's all gone. Okay, my sister fell in love, as I both fell in love, got married, and my sister moved to Kobe in Japan uh, in 1973. Uh, so now we're going to see. Um, the war unfortunately erupted in 1975. I was 17 years old, and our school closed down, I joined international humanitarian organization called Caritas. And here you can see how the ambulance is full of uh, I mean, bullets. And we were, uh, we were helping people uh, who were mostly in shelters and we were distributing food and everything. Um, but the situation escalated dramatically in 1976. So Mary Rose and her husband urged us, to, uh, my parents and I, to come to Japan. We all saw that is a conflict of a few months, as we always have, you know, like now, for instance, we're having some problems. But then we didn't expect it's going to last 15 years. Uh, so we, we thought we can go for a few months until the situation cooled down. I had to escape by taking a commercial boat to Cyprus because the airport was closed. 
and uh, then uh, my parents joined when the airport opened. Also, I was heartbroken uh, to leave the country, family, friend. I remember reaching Japan. Um, that is, uh, this is an old family photo, one of a younger. And that's my sister who I went to. She's 15 years older. So my, um, also when I left Japan, I felt like I got a second chance in life because unfortunately, some of my friends were killed during the battles. And I, and even our house got occupied. Anyway, and I lost all my belongings. And anyway, at least we were alive. I fell in love in Japan with the peacefulness, safety, the kindness of people. At 18, I was captivated by the Japanese uh, culture and the richness. Uh, my sister took us uh, to many places like Kabuki, Bongaku, Nihon Buyo, and No Theater. For inexplicable reason, I fell in love with No. Uh, Without, before even meeting my future husband. So I have no idea what, why it, uh, coming from the war, maybe it was peaceful for me and serene. And um, the solemn atmosphere, and there was a graceful uh, grace hanging in the air, which is called Yugen. Anyway, um, but I have to tell you that no um, recognized as intangible cultural heritage by UNESCO is the oldest surviving theater tradition still actively practiced today. So as you saw, it's a theatrical art involving dance, music, drama, narrative, developed in the 14th century by Kanani uh, and his son Zayami. And some people uh, say that it was uh, originated in the 8th century in China and went back then uh, developed into uh, Salugaku. And the 14th century, Kan Ami and Zayami uh, were uh, sponsored by the shogunate at the time. And it developed there. And it mostly was for the it was aristocratic form um, used for the elites uh, at the time. And okay, so now um, I, I want to ask um, people are surprised I tell them I love no, because I'm um, um, sorry to say, but most Japanese I met uh, will say we don't understand it. And that's the reason actually why I wrote my book, to make it more accessible. Anyway, uh, I, told, I always tell them, you don't have to understand it. You have to feel the emotion uh, conveyed by the performer, especially if the actor is good. You know, they start as a three years old and they have to do it no matter what. So sometimes they do it technically perfectly, but sometimes they're not all, I feel they're good, I mean, not good, but appeal to me. So it's a bit like um, the opera too. Uh, you need a singer, you like one more than another. Uh, it's a personal choice. But uh, here it is. There's over 2,000 no known today. And out of them, 240 are in the repertoire, actual repertoire, in five existing schools. And they have different styles. And these are uh, the no inspired by historical events, literature, folklore, theme, supernatural theme, impermanence of life, and passage of time. One of the examples could be a ghost reviving the moment of the battle or a mother looking for a child. Okay, now I'm going to show you um, um, to you see you know. Okay, uh, the costume are really, uh, usually the foreigner are struck by the beauty of the costume. And um, here, for instance, the theater, you see the Jiu Time in the chorus, 
you see the Hayashi Mir, the musician, and the main actor is called Shite, and the second actor is Waki. And you know, a second actor cannot perform a first actor. They are from family 600 years, father to son, and broken lineage. So it's, to be a Shite is very prestigious, usually. And um, well, this, uh, and you see there's no furniture, nothing. So you need to really immerse yourself with the emotion. And um, well, um, and sometimes emotion are very um, codified. And it's like, I'll give you an example. If uh, raising the hand over means they're crying. But it's not all symbolic like this. It's, uh, you mostly is, um, they have completely different stories, so each story will convey something. So that's why they are portrayed in different masks. There are about 200 different masks used today. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, do you know what this uh, one, the last one, that one, do you know what it means? Anyone knows what, uh, what is this mask is? <laughs> no? Uh, this is a devil mask, uh, demon, and it's called Hanya. And do you know what it's portraying? It symbolizes a je jealous female demon. So in the old century, a jealousy was not accepted. So just to give you an idea, it's so old that it conveys, uh, I mean, the story of the time. And usually, uh, masters are engaged in perfecting the art all through their lives. There's no retirement. Oh, by the way, you know this um, here, the Koken? They sit there and they do mostly nothing except um, dressing the kimono if needed because you usually don't. But, um, but you know why they're there? If the main actor um, get ill or, I mean, or even pass away, one pick him up and one continue. So can you imagine, no, will not end. It has to be, no matter what, I mean, go to the end. But can you imagine if someone really die and you have to take him out? I mean, this is how strict they are. And they're perfecting art to attain the summit of artistry. And it seems that it's all that count. After all, no literally mean pristine accomplishment or perfected art. And they need a rigorous discipline to achieve the highest standard in physical, vocal, and spiritual technique. Okay, now I want to just uh, go, ah, this is uh, the play where the jealous uh, de devil, I mean demon is, and it's called Do Joji. Mm -hmm. uh, now I want to go over Minoru Umewaka. He is the great grandfather of my husband, and without him, no would have maybe it's not existing anymore. You know, when the, there was the Meiji Restoration in 1968, uh, No was usually sponsored by Shogunate. For the, and when the old system crumbled with the overthrow of the Shogun in uh, 1868, the art fell on hard time. So most actors uh, left Edo and to take trade. Some of them were farmers, some sold their kimono to survive. But Minoru uh, is the first, is wanted, didn't want to give up. And he's the first one to, uh, to build the theater and charge an entrance fee, encouraging actors to return. And that's how they managed to survive. And not only he is the um, effort of preserving no, but he played a pioneering role in sharing tradition with foreign scholars. So people outside of Japan would learn about the art. Notably, Ernest Fenoloza, an American historian, was his disciple for two decades. And since no aesthetic are transmitted orally from father to son, 
Fenelosa became the first non-Japanese scholar to document Noh and write a treatise based on the training and the Minoru. And then uh, this was um, when he passed away, uh, the note uh, of Fenelosa was uh, given to Ezra Pound, and who in, uh, in turn shared it with W. B. Yeats and uh, Arthur Wally. So in 1991, uh, 1921, a book, uh, Wally published translation of 19 play, and um, it became a landmark for Western practitioners, including Samuel Beckett, Eugene O'Neill, Peter Brook, and many others. And my husband performed as a, as a pond, uh, and Yid celebration in the University of Maine. Anyway, now you must be wondering how I met uh, my husband, you know. Despite being educated um, in, the, uh, in the French uh, education in Lebanon, I reached Japan. I went, um, I was um, accepted at Canadian Academy. It's an international high school which, um, uh, in Kobe and as a senior. So this is where I met my husband in 1976. We were classmates. I did not know of the time that he came from the family where tradition is handed down from father to son, but he never spoke of his background. But people are surprised why um, a no master is attending an international school. Uh, now, his father passed away at 14, uh, and then he was very affected because it was not only his father that he lost, he lost his master. And this is too early to lose because they are trained through for many years to be able to achieve the highest point. So um, his mother, Rosa here, she is a Japanese, but her name is unusual. She's a Catholic and um, she was very much ahead of her time. And she thought that in order to introduce the no tradition abroad, um, they ha he, her son should speak English. The speaker is not good. Fine. Okay. Now it's okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so as uh, Mrs. Keiko said, I went to England and studied computer science and then um, uh, USC, uh, Osaka, and then um, so at that time I didn't like in the 80s, I couldn't hand, uh, handle the, uh, it wasn't very safe in LA and I, my father passed away so I went back to Lebanon. After a short while, um, the civil war was ongoing, reached a very critical point, and in eight, 1981, compelling me to go back once again to Japan. So this is how I joined the Osaka University Graduate School, and um, I reconnected with Naohiko, and our relationship rekindled. Uh, after, uh, well, um, after one year of um, he proposed to me, so I was uh, mm, I wasn't I was very um, it was unexpected, and I didn't know whether uh, I wasn't ready for marriage and uh, especially involving in uh, navigating diverse uh, culture and the complexity of the, my husband close knit you know, society. And I didn't know what was expected from me. But now he could reassure me not to worry, and um, and he told me, please don't worry. Uh, the no society is unreal. Uh, if it existed, it would not affect us. Our society, you and me, will be the core of everything. Oh well. Um, although he assured me, I was not. Um, <clears throat> I did not um, feel. I, I mean, I didn't know if I could manage to help him uh, because 
he was without any, um, without father, without anything. He was left to fend by himself um, uh, after the death of his father. Um, he once said in an interview, losing my father meant losing my master. I was lost at sea. So our challenge was even bigger because the loss of father meant losing a complex network of connection and professional relationship. Such, um, in the normal world, such connection are passed down exclusively from father to son. So, um, he, and additionally, his half brother inherited the father troop and a large number of disciples and amateur. This was now, now he go at three with his father. And look here, these were all the disciples of my father-in-law. This cannot be today. <laughs> this, you see, um, he's there in the middle. And all uh, those disciples are the one, amateur student are the one who make us live. Because you cannot get much uh, from performances. You have to rent the theater, you have to pay all the musicians and everyone, the professional. You don't really can live. So they are a kind of pattern, uh, those uh, amateur, amateur people. Anyway, um, so now, um, okay, uh, he, uh, Nariko was considered lucky to, to have inherited the Katasuke. This is, you know, it's, no, it's codified. So everything is secretive, detailed choreography are uh, in this night, I mean, 19 book of 190 play. And that was the most important prize thing to him. That's how he could like take over by studying it uh, very meticulously. And anyway, um, and that was, uh, if something happened at an like, earthquake and one thing need to be taken, I think he will take his katazuke because they were handwritten by his grandfather and given by his father. So now you must be wonder how I, I was assimilated in this new world. And luckily now his mother did not have traditional expectation of me and never told me to do anything. Although his cousin and as a member of the family, I urged him to make me learn how to use the proper etiquette of like uh, bowing and so on and all these um, rules backstage. But um, mm, but I mm, at the beginning I used to um, wanted to prove that I could blend in, so I started wearing kimono. And luckily, small and black hair, so people uh, uh, here, yeah, and uh, people um, were really curious about me. But then I noticed that there's no foreign attending the play because there was no way for them to know what to see, who to see. Uh, it was really another world. So I started. Um, uh, opening the VIP room, uh, inviting executive people and uh, diplomat in order for them to take the know abroad. And that helps a lot. Uh, now, um, once I didn't mind wearing kimono saying, although not expected for me, but um, what I minded was how women there are expected to be very submissive. I'll give you an example. One of my first uh, uh, surprise of uh, the first time I went to the No Theatre with my husband, um, yeah, he told me, "Please, in this place, uh, walk three steps behind me." So I was really <laughs> startled, you know. I say, "Wow!" <laughs> and but then when we arrived to the backstage, everyone was on the floor. I. It was like, wow, uh, I mean, because when the main actor comes, and I mean, 
even old people were bowing with their head down on the floor. I was really, it was really a surprise to me. And that's how I understood how strict is the um, protocol, you know, and how much people was wondering what am I going through. Because every time I meet people, they will say, oh, what did you meet? And then, oh, how did they accept you? And then, oh, how do you manage? These three questions every day I receive them. And <laughs> to tell you the truth, one friend, uh, an acquaintance, uh, after a magazine came out, she told me, you know what? Um, me and my friend had a bet on you that you are not going to last one year. And now we are 41 years together, <laughs> but you can imagine it hasn't been easy. Uh, and the worst thing was for me was when my husband was teaching the children. You know, at three years old, they have to do a perfect performance without any mistake, without 600 people, you know, let's look at them. My daughter, Soraya, a Lebanese name, she wasn't um, affected by the strictness of the uh, teaching, but my son was very much affected. He was very sensitive, and uh, I was often taking him to the hospital with stomach pain, you know. But he will cool down when we give him some present, but still, it was very hard. And uh, you can see here that my daughter is three years old with a training. You can see the look on her face you know, very strict. And uh, here as her premiere, she's three years old. Here backstage, I'm dressing her up. This is my son, you can see his face, how he's feeling. <laughs> and my husband had to be even stricter than his father was with him because they have mixed heritage. And everyone was like observing them, like giving comment that they are not purely Japanese, so he was strict so that not a mistake could be done. That was very hard for me to, to handle. But, um, um, and they had as well, when, whenever they took a lesson, bow to him, putting their head down to the floor. And it was like, not their father, it was their master. And that's how it's in the tradition the respect of the master, even toward the children, and, you know, very tough. Um, now, it's not easy to make change in the normal world. I used to um, bring English synopsis, and some people really were angry and calling for one hour, say, what am I making changes? Uh, open the VIP, giving English synopsis, etc. Uh, I was like, I wasn't felt um, welcome in this place. But now, uh, they're all doing the same. Uh, so I, uh, and at the time there was no, um, uh, now nowadays at the National No Theatre and the theatre, they provide uh, um, uh, something to, I mean, English subtitle or something. But that didn't exist before. And uh, people were surprised how I'm about, uh, enthusiastic about no and the pride I took to share information. And they would say, oh my God, amazing, you're still in love with your husband. I said, hmm, <laughs> I'm just helping sharing the beauty because I saw how he was training. He had two hours standing medita meditation every day. This is not the part of the no training. It was his own way to have control on stage. And I you can really tell that he had control over the stage. I mean, uh, through his meditation practice daily. And uh, as um, this Keiko said, um, this um, documentary on the heart um, connected to the monitor Usually his heartbeat is about 70 to 80 per second. It went over 240, and that was shocking to everyone, showing how much the concentration is needed 
but not everyone the same. It was it's his way uh, of giving all his best, and that's what he does. And not only that, it shows how the, uh, it, the outside could be very serene, but the inside is turbulent. I mean, the emotions are all there, and that is 240 per second is a proof of uh, his state of mind. Well, but outside it was very peaceful, you know. And so this is how I um, wanted to help him and, and you know, share it with the world. Uh, so um, Nahiko was a pioneer and uh, he was an uh, educated um, uh, Catholic um, education and went to Sophia University, which is has a um, Jesuit. And they asked him, uh, to choreograph um, a no play with um, a new story, and they call it uh, and call it the baptism of Jesus. So here, uh, oh, this is my sister, the elder sister, Soraya, my younger sister from Paris, and this is like in Waka, no short time. This at Princeton when Soraya performed. And that is the baptism of Jesus, in, uh, which was done at Christmas Eve uh, in, with uh, Pope Jean Paul II. Um, as you know, the costumes here are not the traditional ones. So whenever we had a new, uh, new play, uh, we asked performer, this was done by Kubota Ichuku. And you see, we had a lot of performances outside. They are magnificent, but this kimono were very heavy. And no kimono is much lighter because they have to move around. Um, however, um, even with the Japanese, I mean the North kimono, traditional one, they have to wear over 10 kilo. Uh, can you imagine? So it's... Uh, but those kimono were gorgeous. We were performing in uh, Kawaguchiko in front of uh, Mount Fuji. Uh, then, um, uh, so this even my daughter performing with her father. And this is a called Sugi no Hana method of dyeing the kimono uh, by Kubota. Uh, it was very famous, uh, which is called uh, Sugi Gahana. Uh, literally, is the flower at the crossroad. It's a Japanese technique of dyeing f the fabric, as you see, is very particular. Uh, and then we had um, the renowned uh, Madame Hanae Mori, if you know her. He's, she's the only hot couture uh, designer who did a perf um, this. Uh, this is a play called Takayama Ukon which is uh, the story, a real story of the priest ex which exiled to the Philippines and died there. And um, here, uh, it, uh, that's why it had a cape and so on. Uh, and that is Junko Koshino, uh, the spiral move uh, design of the costume. She's a very modern contemporary. Now I want to take you through, and uh, that is Hanai Mori. She did two costumes, in one in white, one in black. This is one of my um, performances I um, organized uh, for Sakura with the famous violinist uh, Ikigo Sawai. Uh, so now I want to take you a bit to Lear. My husband uh, want, uh, like uh, Japan Foundation, as you know, uh, uh, Japan Foundation Asia, they um, produce a play uh, based on Lear and uh, with 35 artists from all Asia. And this, um, this was like every performer were given the freedom to perform the storyline in their own language and incorporate the theatrical movement and style unique to their culture. Maybe I can show you a slide uh, of it. Uh, uh, this is the Pekin op uh, Opera. My husband was Lear, and uh, that was in 1997. It's 
actually the light is not going to show you much, but you can have an idea. Yeah. Uh, this was uh, directed by Ong Kang Sang, uh, a young uh, Singaporean director. And there was a Beijing uh, opera star and all the famous uh, artists from those different countries. Anyway, um, later on, uh, my husband uh, wore a Tatar costume to um, symbolize in an old and powerless king. Um, the Yami who uh, believes that there's no play superficial imitation of the characters because the true skill comes from within. That is something that the performer generates from the inside. Uh, okay, then um, afterwards, this was um, Lier was done with 12 people with the Uh, that one, yeah. And that they incorporated um, laser in their production, uh, projection using laser coming, pointing different direction on the stage, symbolizing the sea that King Lear sunk after being betrayed by his daughter. So we can show a little bit here the laser. Uh, we can show a little bit. You see, you see here the mask change, the costume change. And uh, that was taken to Paris uh, and many countries. Okay. He played two roles, the man and the wife. It wasn't only that no, my husband as well did many play, uh, modern play, um, with, uh, I mean, wearing a mask with a costume, and uh, we took them to many, many countries uh, in different languages because he, um, uh, one, uh, Angela Jeff uh, said, Nariko transplant the complexity of traditional North theater setting into a modern setting with dream and illusion crossing over. So I was producing those play in Lebanon and that was my favorite one to show um, my, the, my friend what the no is. Uh, and I was overjoyed when my children uh, performed with their father um, can I? <laughs> uh, 
uh, we, at a festival uh, called Al Bustan, and that was for the 400th commemoration of Shakespeare. And it was performed with a pianist, and uh, they perform uh, Bach, Ravel, Wagner, Berg. You can see a small clip. Mm -hmm. uh, oh no, that one. That one. That my daughter. Uh, can hold. Yeah. my son and my daughter. See how they slide. We're running out of time, so I'm going to show you one last play, which was a multimedia theater production combining no with martial art, Brazilian movie, and multimedia technology. It was done for the Olympic, organized by the Brazilian embassy, supported for the handing over of the Olympic torch from Rio to Tokyo. So my daughter was directing the play, and you can imagine had a lot of clashes with her father because she brought the karate champion and the capoeira in it. Uh, well, we can see a little bit of the play here. That was not the music, but my daughter did this compilation. But you can see the multimedia. He's playing a warrior. wearing a dress here. Here you have an idea of uh, our different production. I mean, I don't have all the DVD, but you can see some of them. And you know, in Japanese, uh, there are over 1,000 people attended. It was at Panasonic Center. And at that time, they were saying, wow, we can come here every day. 
I say, wow, because they don't come to the North yet, uh, unfortunately. And that is the reason why I'm, uh, I wrote the book. To, uh, and even this book, um, uh, after reading the book, many comments were, oh, now you made us feel like seeing a no play. I say, oh. <laughs> And the French book, I had the French book here. Um, I, I married a no master. And um, many French say, oh, we feel like coming to Japan to watch a no play. So um, anyway, um, I hope uh, you, it's already uh, nearly 1 o'clock. So it's time for question, I think. Thank you for listening to my story. I hope some of you will be more interested in no. And most importantly, uh, through my personal uh, journey, I hope to encourage students uh, to persevere and um, have a um, positive mindset to overcome challenges as I did. <laughs> Thank you. Now we have uh, opened the floor for question, I think. I have a hearing problem, and uh, so I will have to go near you to listen to your question. I lip read. This is one more challenge. Well, thank you very much. I, I, I will love to see those live shows. But are there any DVDs or any, any uh, production that we see today? Oh, thank you very much for really uh, inviting me over. I'm really happy. I hope you enjoy a glimpse of what no is. Thank you very much. So, there's no DVDs in that. Uh, no that DVD? Is hmm. What do you mean, no DVD? Are there DVDs of the performances? Oh, yes. This, uh, you can see it. Uh, it's, uh, had, uh, we were invited to the, uh, what you call, Japan House. Um, Sao Paulo. There's three Japan houses in the world. One is Sao Paulo, one London, and one LA. So they channel it on their YouTube. You can just put hell says no. Yeah, so you can watch the whole performance. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think we can watch these interesting productions. Well, one day I, I would love to have uh, the live show here in, in campus. Uh, any question from Flora? Uh, Flo so there's a question on Zoom. Can you please tell us how do the Lebanese and Japanese cultures interweave with each other in your family in general? Uh, of it. Yeah, I can share. Uh, I can share the video, the link where you can see many of these clips. Uh, but I will send, how can I send it? Uh, uh, how, will, how do they want me to send it to them? I can type it later on. Th there's also another comment about asking about the URLs for the videos that she showed. Um, uh, they can probably be posted uh, on the CGS website. Um, and the other question is, could you please uh, tell us how the Lebanese and Japanese culture um, interview? Yeah. As a culture way, I mean, um, we are totally different culture, but we have a lot of similarities in the family. Uh, we are uh, very similar in a way like um, the kid can stay home until they want and they, uh, <laughs> Uh, and we take care of our parents. Actually, in my uh, last chapter, I was taking care of my mother for 10 years, and I brought her to Japan last five years of her life, and she was in a nursing home for four years, and I'm ex describing the experiment, and she loved it, she loved it. I mean, we, she had Alzheimer, but she could communicate through her love, uh, her affection. And uh, so we have a lot in common and a lot uh, not in common, like emotion. Uh, we are very Mediterranean, we are very emotional. But um, in Japan, my husband says, showing emotion is a weakness. So I had to adapt. And by the way, I have to read you one, one line. 
he quoted to me, you know, Jubran, Khalil Jubran, uh, the prophet. Well, he said to me, let there be space in your togetherness and let the winds of heaven dance between you uh, for the pillars of the temple stand apart and do not go in each other's shadows. So the space concept in Japan is very important. They need their space, especially the actors. They need their own time, I mean, the meditation, all this. And then in another world, you know. So I had, at the beginning, I was a bit, uh, well, this is what not the concept of uh, uh, what was marriage for me. But uh, eventually, I appreciated this space as well. <laughs> right. Yes. Any question? Is there another one here? I have a question. Uh, many students are learning Japanese language and studying about Japan, learning about Japanese culture and society. Uh, and also they are interested in working in Japan or using their skills to collaborate with Japanese people. You, you have been uh, collaborating with not only with the Japanese, but obviously from many, many other countries and cultures and religious backgrounds and uh, do, what kind of advice could, do you, would you have for the students who want to call out, who want to work internationally or working with the Japanese people? Yeah, you know, uh, the play that I show you with a modern setting with a mask. This uh, my husband uh, wrote three plays and uh, being performed in many countries in the language of the country. So in Lebanon, it was in Arabic, and you have in uh, Italian, and I don't know, all that is. So when I, when in Turkish and all this, what um, appealed to me was he will, after the, uh, the, the people were performing, not him, he was directing them. And they said that the best experience, you know, because you cannot have, uh, you cannot do no. You need years to, to be able to do a no. But to have no, some element of no incorporated in the play, they love performing those things. So hopefully one day we can come to Michigan and you will see. We went to Princeton there and uh, it was there for three weeks performing one of his plays. To, for you, what are the elements of no that you mentioned? Uh, Ele elements of no. The element of no, like mask and some behavior, behavior matter. Or there's a lot of, uh, my husband will direct them in the way that they grasp the essence of, uh, for instance, mushin is uh, mean emptiness. Uh, how to explore the world of Zen and all this uh, in a different way, you know, uh, which they were attracted to. Because for them, no, Japan is very mysterious, right? So they wanted to grasp more uh, some element from the theater, which is very old. Uh, I will go there because I so can hear you. Yeah. Uh, very fascinating. Oh, come happy, yeah. thank you. Well, how do, how do the traditional schools in uh, Japan uh, take this accept? Ah, yes. I forgot to tell you. At the beginning, they were all against him. He, that's why I said he's a pioneer. There were even some people were telling other, you know, do not collaborate with him because he was like this, uh, what you call it, is a nail that stick out. And they wanted to hammer him down, but they could not because the more you stand out, the more you impose yourself. And now many are following after him. But he's a pioneer in daring to, because it was taboo to change, taboo to change anything. You know, I'm telling you, it's codified. I cannot change anything. And that is why it was, uh, well, uh, <laughs> that's why yeah, he's been brave enough to dare to do this. Yes. <laughs> so, do you think that that uh, had something to do with you? 
Oh, no, 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 he's, uh, no, 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 nothing to do with me. But I help him. I help him. Um, well, like, that's why when I invited the diplomat and all this, and we took it to the different country. But uh, he's an original, otherwise he wouldn't have married me at the first place. Because those people are very difficult to, people are surprised how he married me too, because uh, he's very, uh, he has his own, his mother is a very individual person. He taught, she taught him uh, to be different, you know, because this is not the norm. But that's what made him even very special. So you did have the influence. <laughs> I, I don't know. We have to ask him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. Um, a, a bit on the same lines, will you explain again the idea of his mother to send him to international school? Yes. Um, usually those people are take, gone to places, traditional school, like called Dakshin, where all the other no family belong, and the prince family, and the okay, because those traditions are very uh, respected, you know, they are become national treasure because no is intangible uh, heritage uh, by the UNESCO. So um, he was accepted at Gakshuin, but his mother, she herself, I never saw her wearing kimono. She was so unusual, you know. And uh, the influence maybe is his mom, you know, <laughs> and her name is Rosa to put him in international school rather than the traditional way uh, where they, and they get their connection too, right? It's important for them to have those students to make us survive, you know? It's, uh, yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> and now, nowadays, it's not so easy to survive like they used to be because the other, before there was a pattern helping them. It's not, any, yeah, it's not the case uh, as much. And they're having a hard time now, especially when COVID started. Um, many students left and the economic situation is not as good. So um, it affected them, um, yeah, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, the government doesn't help much, unfortunately. So. And you know, I forgot to tell you that no, it's only one time, uh, not like Kabuki, run a uh, different day for many days. So that is why uh, the pressure is very hard on the main actor, because we have to make everything successful. There's no direction. He's the one that directing, you know, kind of. They all know their roles. And what happened is, uh, yeah, is a lot of, um, and no, error, and no mistake is allowed, so it's very tough. I, I don't get praise from him much, you know, because this has impacted him, this no mistake is allowed from three years old. And that's why it's not easy, yeah. And not easy to be with, too. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Any other question? <laughs> I, I'm very interested in your product producer work. Oh, yeah. Like, how could you, how, how do, do you I get do it? to yeah. know so many people? How would you do it? Yes, um, for instance, in simple for instance, uh, now we're going to Dubai. We invited to Dubai and Riyadh for a Biennale. And so I said, oh, I contacted the university there. And why you immediately reacted? and said, okay, uh, we're interested in a presentation, and so on. So people who love theater grab this, because you cannot have a no master speaking English, and a scholar, and a PhD. I cannot have this. Usually, no actors, they don't speak English at the first place. Second, to have this, no one does PhD. His uh, second cousin, uh, he's a national treasure, he's much older, but he hasn't finished school. So to tell you the truth. So for instance, I go to Lebanon, which is much more easy. I go, I say, my husband is coming to visit my mother. 
and two weeks we managed to do a whole play and people say, wow, the teacher said, I need three months to do that play. But of course it's intensive, it's intensive work, it makes them cry, <laughs> I mean, but then they say that the best experience. Yeah, it's, uh, and then so, uh, yeah, usually my, mm, so, so uh, usually as well some diplomat, uh, they're interested to know. And then I say, okay, we can help you uh, do something like um, 110th anniversary of Ankara and uh, Japan. We did a big play at the Opera House uh, and in Turkish. Yeah, you have a play. Okay, can I see? Um, your story will accept in Japanese world, but do they accept? But you see, sorry, hold uh, on. <laughs> hold on, let me. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. So the the Zoom question is: Out of your story, you are accepting all the Japanese My rules, book. but do they accept My your book. Lebanese way? Did you feel any kind of uh, reciprocal acceptance? Okay, here it tells you all. This is my way. <laughs> and that Iwanami is very scholarly. Uh, but the editor was, I was very lucky to, to find this editor, and who wanted, um, who himself wrote, This is my way, is a phrase which summarizes my story. Well, I already, of course, said in the book, for instance, I'm expecting to speak Keigo. Keigo is the most honorific uh, language, right? Japanese. I do not like to. Um, I do not like to talk uh, to talk uh, Keigo. So I, I kind of not talk Japanese because I'm always being observed, and for any mistake or anything to talk about me. So I managed to do it my way by not be totally. Japanese. Otherwise, it was too suffocating for me. Uh, too much to handle. Any mistake, anything. That's why I'm happy here, so free, so easy going. <laughs> I find a big difference, you know. There, the rules can yeah, take a, can be hard to challenge, to uh, accept uh, too much rules and etiquette to follow. That's why I need to go sometime to Lebanon to have it, to charge my batteries. <laughs> I need that. But then, uh, yes, yeah, so I yes, anything. I have another comment. There's a comment. Um, I hope University Musical uh, Society will be able to invite the Ume Waka's production to Ann Arbor. Maybe CJS can help to point to that direction. Oh, it will be a great pleasure. <laughs> And that is what we are trying to do, spread no and its beauty. But I think with the new element, it helped more. Like if you saw the, uh, the Brazilian one, yeah, my husband was mad uh, that capoeira and karate could it uh, by my daughter. But it was the Brazilian embassy who uh, sponsored the whole thing. So we had to put for the Olympic some uh, element of uh, Brazilian. There was music, sang, but then it was uh, very successful. Mm -hmm. You have to have a special uh, talent to be able to do new play. It's not easy to make new play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he has it, I have to admit. <laughs> I. I have a question, is that okay? Yeah. Um, uh, no was described to me by uh, someone that it's more like the contemporary konto in Japanese yeah. comedy. So I was curious um, your thoughts on describing no, which I think a lot of people consider it to be, at least contemporary people consider it to be very serious and mm. you know, as you said, very strict, mm. but that uh, it's actually very comedic, the, a lot of the sort of storylines um, and kind of the scenes that there are a lot of comedic scenes, so much so that uh, people could use the word conto to describe certain elements of no. So I was curious if what you thought about that and how 
null could be sort of translated, or how would we describe it using more contemporary sort of uh, notions? Uh, hmm. It's very codified, and uh, what I can describe is, what is for me interesting is they train all their life to reach the uh, summit of their artistry. So this is more, uh, how can I describe it? I don't, you know, when they tell me, for instance, which play do you like? I say, uh, I say it doesn't matter which play because it depends on the actor, how he's going to perform it, to convey, convey for me some emotion. So this is it's all inner emotion, right? But if you don't have a stage um, presence on stage, it's, uh, it's boring. So this is why many people say boring, we don't understand, slow, um, and unfortunately. And this is why I think this uh, standing meditation of my husband helped him have a sta uh, presence on stage, in my opinion. Um, so the no, how can I describe it? <laughs> uh, it's, well, it depends, I know, because there's so many play, right? So each play is different. But for me, it's very serene and very... Um, Hmm, uh, I don't know. As I have a connection with it. So it's like opera too. You don't understand what they're saying, but if the opera guy is singing beautifully, you, are, you cannot describe it, you know. It's something which comes into your core, you know. I don't know. <laughs> but it is uh, perfected art, right? This is what it literally mean, in a way. Um. I think, thank you very much. If, uh, your very enthusiasm is really connecting people, connecting no and Japanese culture with the global art and kind of giving us a new, in, kind of new, cre uh, uh, bring us to the new creativity. Yes. of human, human culture as a whole, I, I felt. So it's so fascinating. And mm. uh, probably uh, everybody wants to talk with her personally too. So uh, mm. I will end the lecture here. And uh, please join me to give her a heartful thank you. Tonight. Ah, thank thank you. you so much. <laughs> thank you thank for you. coming. Thank you for hosting me.